Hey there, so in this video, I wanna to talk to you about the four ways of knowing and how they apply specifically to learning a foreign language. And best way to learn anything is to draw an analogy to what you already know. So as you watch this video, I want you to think about a physical skill that you've acquired ideally in adulthood that requires you to engage and flow with a dynamic external environment. That can be a social environment. So if you learn how to do a partner dance, like tango or salsa or something like that. Um, also a competitive social environment like martial arts, wrestling, jujitsu, etc. Or maybe you're flowing with a natural environment like surfing or skiing, something that's changing and you have to once again move your body to adapt to the situation. Um, and if you don't have experience learning any of a sport or anything like this, um, most people who are adults will have learned how to drive a car. And that's a very common experience where, once again, it's an embodied skill that requires you to navigate not just with the machine, but also with um, you know, a greater environment. But other things include learning how to play a musical instrument with other people, um, et cetera, et cetera. Whatever it may be, we're gonna now take that analogy, hold it into your head, and we're gonna apply the four ways of knowing to this realm and then also apply it to the language learning realm. And the reason we're gonna do this is because you need to have a clear picture, a mental model of how to properly learn a skill like a foreign language. And your model is going to be corrupted by our academic training, which tends to reduce all types of knowing, the fundamental types of knowing, to one very minor layer, the least important one, all right? So as we go through each of these four types of knowing, we're gonna go through first, what you acquire through that learning, through that knowing, what is it you actually know, what do you have as a result of that knowledge and that learning? Where is it stored inside of you in your memory? And when you have that knowing, what sense does it give you, okay? So the first one is called propositional knowing. And propositional knowing is the one that everyone thinks about specifically when they're learning a foreign language. And if you look at all the problems people have when they can't understand, they can't speak, it's because what they're doing primarily is focusing just on the propositional layer of learning, which once again is the least important part. So what do you acquire through propositions? Well, a proposition is to know that something is something, right? I know that New York City is the bigger city in the US. I know that a, high, a water molecule is two parts hydrogen, one part oxygen. This is kind of knowing ideas or facts and meanings about the world. And so what you acquire through propositional knowing and learning is a belief. And that belief is stored in what's called your semantic memory. And these are all technical terms, uh, terms that you can look up on Wikipedia, for example. So your semantic memory is just my memory. What's the biggest city in America? Oh yeah, New York, right? Um, and then it might give you a sense of conviction. Are you sure it's New York? Oh yeah, yeah, I'm definitely sure it's New York. You sure it's not uh, Los Angeles? Uh, Maybe you're right, maybe it's, you know, so that's, that's what you get with propositional knowing. And um, if we apply this to, say, dancing, that might be, um, oh, I know that uh, the man leads and the woman follows. And I know that when I start a dance, I need to start with my left hand and not with my right hand when I invite someone, right? Um, say in jujitsu, I know that uh, I gain more points if I take back position or mount position um, and that I know that this is an arm bar, or that this is a triangle choke, right? In surfing, uh, I know that I should pop up right when I hit the crest of the wave, right? And I know that um, every couple of waves, you know, it's, it's gonna be the main one I wanna catch. So all these different kind of facts or ideas you pick up when you're doing the thing. And then maybe driving a car, uh, I know that turning my wheel this way makes me turn left. I know that that red hexagon, it means stop. I know that red means stop, green means go. This is the propositional learning, right? Propositional knowing. And when it comes to language, this is what, language learning, this is what everyone focuses on. So when you learn spelling, for example, you're learning that, you know, this is how you spell the word uh, bonjour or French, right? This is how you spell hola, the H is silent. These are all propositions. You know, then you learn about grammar and you learn that, um, in, that there's multiple tenses and for AR verbs in Spanish, you need to drop the AR 
and uh, just leave the A if it's first person singular or third person singular, um, blah, 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 right? And then you learn these things in class through rote memorization to put it into your semantic memory. So your teacher comes to you and says, what's the third person conjugation and in indicative tense of um, comesar, right? And you're like, oh, okay, um, drop the C. And those propositions I can start doing what's called inferential logic. I can start kind of doing calculations and formulations. Uh, uh, okay, so comenzar, comenzar is an AR verb. So let me, um, I need to uh, take the AR, drop the R. Um, oh wait, it's also an irregular or stem changing verb. So it's, a, it's not as comienza, I think it's comienzo or something like that, right? So all this kind of thing is you're playing around, you're accessing your semantic memory. Um, and then all the beliefs or propositions inside of there. And then you're manipulating them and trading them off and being like, ah, uh, I think is this one. And then you're, if you have a sense of conviction, then you come up with your answer, right? Now, you can get really good at this and most language learning programs and teachers and apps will help you develop your propositional knowledge of the grammar, of uh, the translations from your native language to the target language, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but when you then come into the environment of conversation, psh, you freeze up because you have all these propositions swirling around in your head and it kind of puts you into a paralysis um, um, and then also it's too slow. You're not able to actually communicate and express yourself. So this is why propositional knowing is not really useful to us for the most part. It has a use, but it's subservient to all the other ones. All right, cool. So now let's get into the, the, the real stuff here. Procedural knowing, which requires a procedure or a skill. This is either a cognitive skill or a motor skill, an attentional skill, whatever it is, it's an unconscious, what they call implicit skill, implicit learning, and um, it's stored in your procedural memory, also known as implicit memory. Once again, look these terms up on Wikipedia if you want to go dive deeper. And what, the cool thing about procedural skill and, and knowing is that it's unconscious and automatic. It's about coordinating your motor sense cognition so that things just kind of bah, happen automatically. So in dancing, you know, you do your hip swing in salsa or bachata or something, and you first have to learn that coordination, but once you get enough repetitions in there, boom, then it's just kind of automatic and things just start flowing, right? Same thing, if you're doing uh, jujitsu, these are my skills I can, I can reference to, right? And it's, I'm doing, uh, say, you know, uh, a, an arm bar, right? Grabbing someone's arm and trying to, trying to break it. And there's, I have to coordinate, you know, put the arm between my legs, squeeze my knees together, you know, put my hip in the right position, Tighten it here, grab his wrist, you know, all that kind of stuff. These are all procedures I'm doing with my body, which once again, through repetition over and over again, it starts to become automatic and boom, stored in there. For surfing, the balancing on your board, you know, feeling when to pop up, all that kind of stuff. The, um, you know, balancing here, popping up, uh, turning left, turning right, all that kind of stuff. And then of course, car, driving. Just think about, if you don't do any of those things, think about driving. What do you do when you're driving? Um, once again, changing the shift, if you know how to drive a stick shift, um, turning the wheel, uh, accelerating, slowing down, navigating around objects. This is all in your procedural memory. It's just in your body. You don't even have to think about it. It requires no conscious effort whatsoever once you have it deeply stored in your procedural memory. And when you acquire these skills, you develop a sense of power. So you're in a certain arena and you can make stuff happen in it. In dance, you can make the woman spin around and feel good and look beautiful. In you know, jiu-jitsu, you can dominate the person, get on top, make them tap, submit. In surfing, you can flow on top of the wave, feel you know, top of the world. And then in driving, you, know, you can get the work on time, <laughs> right? So you can just make things happen and you have a sense of power, a sense of agency in the world, right? Now notice already how much cooler procedural knowing is than propositional. What is this in language? Well, that's the first thing we're gonna learn in the MIM method program. Everything you're doing fundamentally is making movements in time, right? Right now I'm speaking, I'm moving my mouth, I'm even moving my hands, moving my face. This is how I'm communicating to you with right now. And each of these little micro movements is its own micro skill that can be learned and stored in my procedural memory so it's automatic. So you're learning Spanish, you wanna make that sound, There's a, that's a skill you can learn. You know, you wanna make the un, 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 nasal sounds in French, that's a skill you can learn by adjusting your soft palate and all that kind of stuff, right? And when you acquire that skill, you get a greater sense of power, I can just mimic and create these sound effects. 
and also applies to my attentional and cognitive, right? So there's a skill of being able to follow along with fast speech and be able to catch all of the movements, right? If I don't have that skill, it's all a blur, but I can train that skill as we train in our program and then boom, it comes in nice and cleanly the same way if you're an experienced dancer or martial artist or surfer, you can watch another dancer, martial artist, or surfer, and kind of notice all the subtle nuances of how they're doing things, right? Watch the master do it, and then like, oh, little, how he puts that little micro adjustment in his hip makes all the difference, right? That gives you a, that ability of attention and perception is also a skill that you can train and gain more power by storing in your procedural memory. Great. So usually people can get that. Where it gets a bit more complicated is the next type of knowing, perspectival knowing. This is what is knowing so if propositional is knowing that something is this, procedural is knowing how to do something, and perspectival is knowing what it's like to be within a certain perspective, like here and in now, what it's like to be in a place, in a time, right? So what are you acquiring there? You're acquiring a situational awareness, right? Um, right now, I'm, I'm talking to my laptop making this video, and I have an awareness of my camera, of how I'm looking right now, all that kind of stuff. If I apply it to, to dancing, I might be aware of where the, you know, the foot position and the weight of my dance partner is. If it's jujitsu, I'll be aware that his, um, you know, his hand is free to do some, do some damage. So I have to be aware of that and, and, and be aware of where my weight is and where his weight is. So all these motor sensory awarenesses in the here and now that just kind of once again come to me automatically, the more situational awareness I have, then the more perspective of knowing I have, then uh, the more I can apply my procedural skill. Does that make sense? So I know how to do an arm bar, fine, but do I know when to do an arm bar? Do I know how to feel when his body's in the right position for me to do that? Do I, I know how to do this twist and dance. I know how to make a right turn, but do I know when to do that without getting in a car accident? I know how to pop up my surfboard by doing when to pop up on the surfboard right at the crest of the wave, not too soon, not too early, right? This is situational awareness. This is what you want to acquire. This is really where things get interesting in language learning. So I know how to make that and how to pronounce hablar, querer, and make all these things, but do I know when to do it, how to respond to my conversation partner in the right context, right? And when I practice that and I store it, the store is in my episodic memory. What's episodic memory? Um, well, if you do any of these skills, I want you right now just to imagine in your mind the last time you did it, right? So if you're a dancer, imagine, you know, last time you did a spin move or just create that image in your head and you can put yourself in that perspective. You can feel it in your body. You can visualize it in your mind. Um, you can even feel the emotions associated with it and all the other kind of feelings. This is your episodic memory and uh, this is really important and what you're really gonna wanna develop with a learning, learning language. And what it gives you when you acquire more perspectival knowing, you get a greater sense of presence here and now. Now let's contrast that with the propositional when you're always like conjugation, A-R, E-R, verb, blah, 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 and you get paralyzed and you're in your head. What you really want is to be present in the situation, watching your conversation partner, your dance partner, your competitor, the other cars on the road, whatever it is, you're present, you're here and now, and you can respond and act and be a, and act in the moment without thinking. That sense of presence is what we're looking for in the language learning context as well. So really what we're focusing on in this new program of Flow School 3 is cultivating this perspectival awareness. When I talk about getting into character or channeling a spirit or embodying a persona, what I'm really talking about technically is developing your perspectival knowing. You know, what is, what is it like to be a native Spanish speaker in the context of ordering, ordering at a grocery store or you know, showing up at this cultural event, whatever it may be. You're trying to cultivate that and get a greater sense of presence. So then all of that then bundles up into the final type of knowing, which is participatory knowing, which is knowing, which is very deep. It's the hardest one to kind of explain with words, but it's, the sense, uh, it's um, being part of something greater than yourself. So once again, the dancer, me as an individual dancer, I'm actually participating in a dance with another person, right? It takes two to tango. I can't just be tangoing by myself. I need to have another person. I'm participating in this, in this co-creation. And not only am I participating with my dance partner, but the two of us are participating in this greater tradition of you know, salsa, bachata, tango, whatever the dancing is, right? Or if it's jujitsu, 
um, the martial art we're participating in or, you know, the surfer participating in nature itself and the flow and ebb and tide of the waves and the water and the wind, all that stuff. Or even the car driver, as mundane as it is, if you think about it, next time you go on the road, it's pretty incredible. You have like a thousand drivers on the road who are all like, just bobbing and weaving these giant death machines in between each other. And yeah, a lot of people die in accidents, but most people don't die most of the time on cars because all of us somehow are able to acquire this participatory knowing of being able to just flow and navigate. When we talk about participatory knowing, we're talking about flow. This is what really flow is about, getting into that flow um, environment. So what you acquire is a sense of fittedness, being fit to the environment. Really, when you're learning any of these skills, you're what's called mutually shaping. So I'm shaping the environment, but more importantly, the environment is shaping me to be a dancer, to be a better fighter, to be a better surfer, to be a better driver. I'm fitting my body and my senses and my reactions and movements to the environment so I can just whoop, come into the traffic flow and just kind of flow with it. So I'm, that's my participatory. It's, a, it's the sum total of your biological, cultural, and ongoing neurological, physical evolution to the environment that you're being shaped to, right? And that stores, as weird as it sounds, into your sense of self. This is kind of your sense of self, where you fit into a place, like, oh, this is who I am, and it's, that's there. And then what it gives you a sense of, when you're in an environment where you have participatory knowing and you fit in, and your sense of self fits into the greater environment, then you feel a sense of belonging, right? Now, if you've had the experience of culture shock, going to a foreign country, and you want to speak French, you want to speak German, whatever it is, but you can't. So you're like, whoa, there's all these sound effects going on. It's not just the sound effects. People are just doing stuff differently. They have different customs, different culture, and you feel like you don't belong. You're like a, a, what's it, a round peg in a square hole or whatever, right? And that's what's missing. So really, you know, a lot of people who follow me know I say very often, I don't care about language. I care about people. I care about culture. And what we're doing here is trying to develop your sense of belonging into an environment and you know you have that sense of belonging because you great you experience this flow state of being unified and part of something greater and it's extremely enjoyable it's one of the most if not the most powerful positive emotional experiences that there are as well as transformational because through the act of expanding your your sense you have to expand and adapt your sense of self in order to fit into a new environment so it transforms yourself and all these other things kind of come together. So the participatory knowing is really where it's all at. But once again, we're not doing this, right? So in the language environment, we should be acquiring this flow. How do we kind of respond to the environment, feel, identify as a native speaker almost, um, feel a sense of belonging in that foreign cultural environment. The foreign becomes the familiar, as I always say. And that's what you should be training and practicing. But instead in class, we just focus on acquiring different beliefs about how to translate A to B and storing it in our semantic memory and being convinced about it enough to get good grades on a test, right? So cool, I hope that was in a useful and interesting kind of way. Um, if, you, if you're in our program, I'm gonna start using this language way more because it allows us to, um, to navigate these complex issues much more cleanly. So I'll say like, okay, we're developing our procedural knowing of rolling the R, all right, remember this proposition, hold your tongue just slightly below your alveolar ridge. What's an alveolar ridge? Semantic memory, boom, 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 right? So all these things kind of come together. Uh, let me know what you think about this on the comments and hopefully um, you'll be able to find more participatory knowing in your own life, uh, not just in learning languages, but also dance, wrestling, surfing, skiing, driving, anything else. Um, once again, if you're learning a language, if you do have these experiences, be sure to draw the connections. Anything you've learned in your other skills that's helped you acquire that skill better and get better at it, see if you can find the analogy, the analog to what we're doing here in language learning. And um, there's always an analog. And once you find it, it helps you learn this one even faster. All right, cool. That's it for me.